or his legs. Oklahoma's Sam Bradford. He has been a symphony of quarterbacking efficiency for the Sooners. Who's the best today? You got to think big to understand it. You got to look long and hard to take it all in. Two schools with larger than life legacies. The rivalry brewed over so long a time is always intense. But never more so than when title hopes are at stake. And that's just what we have today. From the great states of Oklahoma and Texas come two teams ready to lay it all on the line. For pride and to keep the dream alive. Time to pick your color. Oklahoma Crimson or Texas Orange. This one's big. You are looking live at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. For over a century, Oklahoma and Texas have waged one of the fiercest rivalries in college football. Today's classic on ABC is presented by Best Buy. It is the 103rd matchup of the Red River rivalry as number five Texas and number one Oklahoma meet in a game where bragging rights are just the beginning. 92,000 split right down the middle. The AP top five tells you the story. Not only taking dead aim at a Big 12 title, but also a national championship. That's how high the stakes are here today. Now, let's go down to the sideline. Chris Fowler and the gang standing by. Chris. Brent, great to be with you. Crimson, burnt orange under beautiful blue skies. Neither team, neither offense, neither quarterback's really been challenged so far. They've been so dominant. For both defenses are aggressive. Radford and McCoy have weapons to work with, but who's going to have the time to work with? Uh, that's the big thing here is the adversity. Neither quarterback has faced any adversity at all, and they both will at some point, you would think, in this football game. Sam Bradford, to me, at this point, the way he's executing, the talent that he has around him, the offensive line is just playing his way as well as any quarterback in college football. The challenge is on Colt McCoy. Accounts for 68% of the Longhorns' offense. He leads them in rushing. He's completing 79% of his passes. He's got to have one of those games that he'll go into the annuals as a great Texas quarterback. So Colt McCoy, for the Horns to win, has got to raise the bar here and really challenge this Oklahoma defense. It was an emotional speech he made in the locker room after defeat last year that really turned the corner in terms of leadership for Colt McCoy and his team. You compare the coaches, it was Bob Stoops who turned around the fortunes in this rivalry when he arrived at Oklahoma. But Mac Brown's gotten him two out of the last three years. And Chris, you know, as a former coach, I love to say this about these guys. As good a football coach as they are, they're even better human beings. They represent the College Football Coaches Association like you should be, honest with unquestioned integrity. Stoops has a chance, as young as he is, maybe to catch Bowden or Paterno, maybe, if he stays in it. And all Brown has done is had 10 straight nine-win seasons. I mean, those are two great human beings, plus wonderful coaches. At the top of the game, it used to be kind of frosty between them, I think, when yeah. Bob first got it. Now it's friendly, yeah. you can think. Yeah. So. You're thinking long-term future. Bob Stoops exactly. catching Bobby and Joe. He might. He's, He's just worried about running it out of here with game. one win here. Now we'll find out which team can, can manage all the emotion, can avoid the big mistakes and handle their first adversity because the adversity is about to begin for somebody in a few minutes. ESPN's presentation of college football on ABC is going to return right after this as the Sooners take the field. OU and Texas in a classic. Coming up live after a word from our ABC stations. This have come to the Cotton Bowl. First began playing back in 1900, and they moved this game to Dallas in 1912 and permanently in 1929. For Bob Stoops, it's a little bit shorter to the Cotton Bowl, but not by much. Dallas equal distant almost seven mile difference that Mac Brown had to travel 
The Texas coaches stand by with Lisa Salters. Let's go to Lisa. Thanks a lot, Brent. Matt, Colt McCoy comes into this game with a 79% pass completion rate. What's going to be the key for him to have that kind of success today against the Sooners? Lisa, we've got to have great protection. Bob's a great defensive coach. They put a tremendous amount of pressure on quarterbacks throughout the year. If we can protect up front, the way Colt's throwing, he, he can throw it against anybody. Now, Oklahoma, I know you don't want to hear this. They've outscored their opponents 103-3 to in the first quarter. All eyes are going to be on your young secondary. What do you need to see from those guys? We've given up nine points, three field goals in the first quarter, so we know OU's great on offense. We believe in our defense. Stat for stat, I like that. Good luck to you, Coach. Thanks, Lisa. Brent? All right, Lisa, and Oklahoma will get the first possession as Texas won the toss and deferred. And Bob Stoops versus Mac Brown is six and three overall. Kirk Herbstreit just set the record for <laughs> arriving in the broadcast booth, getting Woo. up from the field. So, uh, Kirk, I know you guys have talked about these quarterbacks all along. That's their total yards. Remember, rushing as well as passing touchdowns. Even though Bradford not known for his running, he has scored a couple rushing, and each of them tossed three interceptions. Both playing as well as anybody, not only in their own conference where quarterback play is exceptional, but in the entire nation. And of course, both will be in the spotlight today for these two offenses. What a beautiful day. Oh, huh? Just perfect. This is one of the great scenes, folks. If you like to make your way around classics in college football, make sure you attend one of the Red River rivalry. I noticed with the Lee Corso, he didn't get the memo. It's no longer the Red River shootout. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> Boom. End of the show there. He scared me to death with that. <laughs> I know he did. Iglesias and Murray. A couple of OU's great athletes are back, and Justin Tucker with the ball on the tee for the Horns. Now let the good times roll. Gonna come out on the 20 yard line. There are so many impact players and college football today is presented by Best Buy and let's take a look at some of them. Well, we, we decided to go with four and we're going to start in the backfield with DeMarco Murray has been battling back with a knee. We'll see if he's healthy enough to be a factor today. Manuel Johnson number one. Keep an eye on him. He's been a go to guy. Joaquin Iglesias number nine on the other side also very talented and ability to get downfield and a tight end Jermaine Grisham big strong arguably the most talented and most athletic tight end in college football. Bradford not much heat on him and he throws in underneath and completes the first pass to Jermaine Gresham and uh, that of course is perhaps the most talented tight end. They flex him off the line and Bradford will go to him and he starts off the game with a completion. Kevin Wilson the offensive coordinator from Oklahoma has implemented this new no huddle and it's high octane. They really get up to the line of scrimmage and challenge you defensively. Sometimes as in this case they'll look over for confirmation as we see throughout the country but you'll see as this game goes on the, the speed of this offense is really second to none. Murray is the deep set tailback. Busts his way for the first down. There's a penalty flag on the play. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense number 37. 15 yard penalty enforcement and the run. Automatic first down. Henry Melton, the converted running back, defensive end, guilty of the face mask violation. This Texas defense, of course, knows that they have to streamline the playbook because of the speed of Sam Bradford, and they have to be able to penetrate. Will Muschamp, the defensive coordinator, one of the best in the country, was brought in by Mack Brown for this type of game, and he said he's going to cut back on a lot of the plays just to get lined up and play fast, but you can't make mistakes like that. Five yards shy of midfield. Comes back with Murray on a run and he's thrown for a loss. And that time the defense led by Jared Norton who took over as a starting middle linebacker last week and Muschamp told us that he would probably come back with Norton instead of Bobino as his starter. Probably the best group of linebackers Brent that Texas has had in a number of years. Third 
Fake the end around. Dump it off to Murray in a foot race with a linebacker. And he is deep into Texas territory. Gideon, the young defensive back, but that's a 34-yard gain before Gideon can get a hand on it. Well, the fake to Murray and then the end around slowed Texas just enough and created some confusion with Muckleroy, the linebacker, 38, who was supposed to be trailing and following. He gets lost in the confusion there, and the slight hesitation gives DeMarco Murray room. And they don't take much time, do they, as they drop it back off to Gresham. That's his second reception. So Gresham takes it down to the five yard line where it will be first and goal and that means probably that Brown will come in Chris Brown he scored six touchdowns for the Sooners and he'll come in there at tailback getting these first towns very important to create that rhythm they'll try Brown first and Texas was ready they might want to try to put some pressure on the boundary and roll Bradford he's not known for his running ability but he scored a couple of times. That of course is the impressive stat that Lisa Salters asked Mac Brown about 103 to three of the first quarter Kirk that's unbelievable. Well, I don't know if we've seen a stat like that in college football 103 to three and they demoralize their opponent in the first quarter before they can adjust and think they have a chance in a game. Try to throw for it. No pressure. Almost intercepted. A great play by Earl Thomas. Number 12. Earl Thomas did a great job of jumping that play. He's a safety and he's out there in one on one coverage against the one, one of the most gifted receivers in a Big 12, Emmanuel Johnson. Not only did he hold his own, he almost stepped in front of that Bradford throw and went 98 yards the other way. Gresham, you'll note, is flexed off to the right. He's had two receptions already. Bradford, though, pumps left. Now comes back. Touchdown, Oklahoma. Emmanuel Johnson. After being denied on the right side of the offense, scores on the left. The pump fake to the inside caught the corner. Ryan Palmer out of position, just a little bit with the shoulders by the quarterback Bradford. Johnson moved from the inside to the outside, got the leverage that he needed, and that's a touchdown. That was close when the knee went down. That was very, very close. The replay obviously confirmed that it was a touchdown all the way, and Jimmy Stevens taps on the extra point. 110 to 3. Wow. Texas turn next, folks. We welcome you back to the Cotton Bowl, and just perhaps Oklahoma got away with one on that third down. Let's take a close look. Watch the knee. Was it down shy of the end zone? The knee is definitely down. It's tough to see where the ball is, but the ball looks short as well. That would have, by the way, set up a fourth down. From I the can't believe that instant replay inch line. didn't stop the extra point and take a look at that. Regardless, they would have had one more shot at it. So here we go. Now it is Texas' turn. Fielded at the 15 by Cosby, the wide receiver. Got a gap. This is the one weakness in the Oklahoma armor. They have not covered kicks well this year. Now, how about our impact players brought to you by Best Buy here? Well, we're going to start in the backfield. You'll see a number of backs, but Chris, you might want to help me here. Oh, by <laughs> open eye, uh, well, number three will be a guy they got to get the football to. Very intelligent player, Quan Cosby, number six. Favorite target at this point of Colt McCoy has big playability. And then, of course, Jordan Shipley on the other side, number eight, also an explosive receiver. They'll try to move him around and at times put him in a slot for matchups. Diving reception comes right on back to Quan Cosby, who returned the kick, and here is number 12, Colt McCoy. 79%. That's tough to do against air. 79% of your passes, but he has been at this point flawless with his ability to make reads. That's what they say is different this year with Colt McCoy from last year. He's getting more protection, but he's processing the information and making very good decisions. 
Obanaya dances back and is thrown down by Ryan Reynolds, who leads this team. Came into the game with 43 tackles. He's now up to 44. With this defense, as aggressive as Oklahoma is, after that opening drive by their own offense, I think it's early in this game, important for Texas, who hasn't faced a lot of adversity, to be able to have some execution and have some success to get themselves to believe that they can move the ball against this aggressive defense. Here's third and four. Oklahoma jumped. There's the penalty call. McCoy will go down, but let's wait now for the penalty to be assessed. It looked like Oklahoma jumped the gun in that. We'll wait and see here. Remember, this was a third and four. And that's a first down. With the five yard penalty, there's a first down. So big Gerald McCoy, who has been a load to handle in the middle of that defensive line, and there's Brent Venables, the Fine. We got two outstanding defense. Matter of fact, we got two outstanding coaching staffs. Now, John Childs, the backup quarterback, is off to McCoy's right. Option, and he can throw a run. Childs got no more than a yard on first down. And Kirk, let's take a look at today's X Factor brought to you by City. Uh, I think if you look on both sides of the football, obviously there's going to be different keys. You start with Texas on defense. They've got to be able to pressure Sam Bradford. They've got to get pressure with four, as we saw in the first series. They were unable to do that. And then for Oklahoma, <laughs> we saw tempo, tempo, tempo. The more first downs they're able to create, the quicker you'll see them get up to the line of scrimmage to try to put that Texas defense on their heels. Play fake down the middle complete. There is that high percentage completion rate and he hits Jordan Shipley the senior his first reception. The play fake Brent that you indicated I think throws the linebackers just enough Trevor Lewis gets stuck uh, Travis Lewis gets stuck in there and also the, the leader Ryan Reynolds by slowing them down and creating a bit of a confusion a nice little window right between the two linebackers and again there's the accuracy from Colt. This time he does hand it off to Obanaya. And he is brought down by Reynolds. Obanaya is an outstanding receiver, folks. He could come out. They'll even, as they stretch the field, motion him out and line him up in a slot. Second and seven, jump ball, diving catch, and a penalty flag. But oh, what a catch by Cosby. I'd be interested to see if they caught Cosby for pushing off there or if they're going to get Oklahoma. There was a lot of contact there. Back in the third. Defense number two. Penalties declined. Result of the play, first down. So the corner, Brian Jackson commits the foul and uh, that will give Texas for you blink what, and these guys are attacking what for big game ability here by Cosby to lay out and extend himself parallel and make the catch former baseball player showing he knows how to get out there at center field and make a catch in the gap now he's your first and goal now for McCoy it's like movement in the middle. I don't see a flag yet. Here comes Obanaya battling hard, running well to the three yard line. No, he's going to be marked down at the seven. I see the umpire jumping in to mark that the knee grazed the ground back there. Right now, Mac Brown and Greg Davis, the offensive coordinator, doing a great job on this opening drive of mixing up the looks, making the Oklahoma defense think and showing some different things that they have not been able to show maybe early in the year. There's Greg Davis, the offensive coordinator. A great attack here again in this opening drive. Now we'll see if their red zone success continues. Read beautifully by the defense that time. Keenan Clayton, a safety who was moved to that linebacking spot, and 22 was all over this play. When they get in this area, they have had a lot of success, but they have not faced defenses like this. And Keenan Clayton 
closing in on those wide receivers. Defensive call has been signaled in. Reynolds passing the lawn to Keenan. Here's your third and goal now. McCoy in trouble. Big Gerald McCoy, 6'4, 295, Oklahoma City. And give an assist here to the coverage. The secondary and linebackers taking away all of Colt McCoy's options. And by doing that, eventually, you know the front four from Oklahoma is going to cave in and get to Colt McCoy. Hunter Lawrence. Perfect so far this year. This will be a 26 yard attempt. So Oklahoma's first possession results in a touchdown. Texas answers, but only with a field goal. Beating Texas 7 3. All on the tee again for Tucker. Blew off. So we'll do it all over and. So let me remind you that this Sunday night for all the teachers who've made a difference in our lives comes a makeover that will proudly play pay one of them back an inspiring all new extreme makeover home edition Sunday 8 7 central on ABC. The State Fair of Texas. Folks if you can fry it you can find it here. Oh my God. They fry everything. You have yourself a corny dog? Not yet. I was here with the producer once, Bob Goodrich, I swear. 12 to 14. <laughs> Fielded at the five. Iglesias, the wide receiver, picks his way out to the 25 yard line. You know, Sam Bradford, we've touched on him a lot, but his intelligence is, I think, the thing that has allowed him to become the quarterback that he is. He's of course you see his numbers. You, you, when you're a quarterback and you run a hurry up offense it's one thing to hurry everybody in the line of scrimmage but you've got to remain calm as far as the way you process information the defenses that you're reading and that's what he does such a good job of and he just happens to have outstanding footwork a quick release and an accurate and strong arm the total package. Coming back with Murray. No more than a yard because of the defense by Lamar Houston. I've been very impressed here. I know they gave up a, a big play to DeMarco Murray and eventually a touchdown. But I can see already early in this game, Texas is sticking to their guns as far as who they are with Will Muschamp. Aggressive, attacking, in your face. You're going to give up some plays, but you're going to make some plays. But at least they're trying to be the aggressor on defense. Sam Bradford managing the offense from under center off a play fake. No pressure rolling right. Receivers were covered. Kirk and he had to haul it out of bounds. Good coverage downfield and this front four prides itself on trying to get pressure but much like we saw from Oklahoma's secondary when you have good coverage like that the speed that these two defenses have in the front four quarterbacks not going to have much time to throw the ball. Third and nine, you saw number 98, Arakpo. He is one of the best in the college game. Can he get to the OU quarterback? And now it's third and nine. Kevin Wilson changes it up. And underneath, well short of the first down. Iglesias, not even close. Brown with the coverage. You, you mentioned the play. They changed the play. But what was interesting is Texas also changed the play from Will Muschamp. A lot of times you see quarterbacks look over for confirmation. He looked over, changed his play, and Will Muschamp said, okay, if you're going to do that, we're going to change our play as well. Some adjustments there, Kirk. That's three and out now yep. this time after that very efficient touchdown. So Mike Nall will be punting with Cosby back deep. Pressure. 
Is there going to be a penalty flag? There is a flag. Noll did a sensational job under pressure of getting that punt off. Remember, it was fourth and nine now. Because it was nine, that's why they declined the penalty. Be back to the Red River rivalry. Oklahoma seven, Texas three. After a three and out, now it's Colt McCoy and the Longhorns coming up on their own 39 yard line. On first down, under pressure, forced out of the pocket and has to throw on the run and was not accurate that time. Let's go down below to Lisa. Well, Brent, as you know, Colt McCoy is still very close to his predecessor, Vince Young. He said they usually text throughout the week. But yesterday morning, Vince Young called Colt McCoy and he gave him some advice. He said, look, it's your job with everything that goes on surrounding this, this game. It's your job to keep the team calm and relaxed, not just during the game, but leading up to the game as well. Brent? Second and ten for McCoy and the Horns. Three down. Blitzer from the outside. McCoy in trouble again to the right side. Throws for a first down to Cosby. What a fine throw on the move. This, of course, had Brent Venables concern. On the move, he said, Colt McCoy is still a very dangerous thrower. Well, it's one on one here, and it's an ability to have Colt McCoy get away from the, the pressure and a rare blitz. Oklahoma, these first two plays here on this series, they blitz twice, which you don't see a lot of from Oklahoma's defense. But the one on one matchup that time goes in favor of Cosby, matched up against Brian Jackson. Fumble. McCoy wraps it up. So on a Missed handoff to Obanaya, ball on the ground, and the quarterback recovers. Sometimes with option football, when you're making a read on the backside end, there's a little bit of confusion. Am I pulling it or am I giving it? And anytime you have uh, just a, a slight bit of hesitation from the back of the quarterback, sometimes you see the ball go down on the ground. The Longhorns fortunate there to recover that. Five receivers on second and 13. Screen. Not much doing because of Nick Harris, the safety, read it beautifully and made the stop. We go to Matt Weiner in New York for an update. Here it is Oklahoma seven Texas three third and nine for the Longhorns. They show pressure. Bust through on McCoy who's on the move. Breaks free. And turns it into a game before Jackson can make the tackle. That shows you his ability to scramble out of trouble. Ability and courage. I think Oklahoma was off sides on a play. It looked like it. The defensive end may have jumped. But instead of going out of bounds, Cole McCoy Offside. said. Defense number 44. Five yard penalty. Repeat third down. That's Jeremy Beal. The speed is one thing, but when Oklahoma's defense, one of the nastiest defenses in the country, is closing in on you, you'd think a veteran quarterback, third time he's played in this rivalry, he said, bring it on. You gotta be careful with those shoulders, Colt. Travis Lewis couldn't wrestle him down. Major Applewhite, you can see him, one of the signals over there. One's hot, one's cold. In case anybody's trying to steal it. Oklahoma, Texas has not shown this look very often at all. The empty with five wide receivers set. Third and four with three down in the defensive front and they move a backer into the gap and it's a four man rush 
McCoy deflected incomplete. Obanaya, the running back, was the intended receiver, and it was Keenan Clayton who got a hand on it. Well, Keenan Clayton moved from safety to linebacker in the spring, and because in the Big 12, so many of these offenses are spread offenses, he's kind of like a linebacker, but really plays as a safety because he's out in coverage so much, and he is jumping up and down after that. He makes a great play, but he's thinking to himself, boy, I could have made a great interception there. John Gold. And Dominique Franks is back deep, one of the defensive backs, so you see from behind goal. Whistle. Prior to the snap. Now remember, there's only four yards here, but this is appeared to be against Texas. It is. Offense number 37, five-yard penalty. It is still fourth down. So after an explosive Offensive start. The game begins to settle down here, and uh, goal will be punting. First punt of the afternoon for the Texans. Longhorns. Fair catch. And then lets it go into the end zone. So it'll come out on the, uh, the 20 yard line. You know, Kirk, as you look around the landscape of uh, college football, I know that you and the gang have talked about this. Yeah. I think by far the best quarterbacks as a group are in the Big 12 Conference this year, and that's what makes this conference special. You're absolutely right. I mean, you, you look at the top 10 in passing efficiency and scoring offense, it's mainly the teams from the Big 12. They've really made a statement to the entire country that I know the SEC always gets most of the credit and the love, but the Big 12, because of the offense and the quarterback play, has definitely closed the gap in some people's minds, maybe become the best conference. Bradford has all time in the world. He can't get anybody open. One receiver went out of bounds and then stepped back in. Now, that is very intelligent by Bradford. Iglesias was stepping out of bounds and instead of throwing the ball to him he took off himself because obviously that would have been a penalty if he had touched the ball first watch Iglesias work the sideline now steps right there as Bradford turns and Bradford moving the other way completes it on the run and ball comes free and it's ruled incomplete let me check that Broyles So then he was down, obviously, on that play over there. Sets up a big third down here early in this game. Again, I, I mentioned it in the last series. I know they gave up a touchdown in the first drive, but Texas's defense is coming after Oklahoma, something we've not seen from any defense yet this year. Again, the, Brad, one, the one defense that got in his face mask a little bit in the second quarter, I was watching it. TCU got on him a little bit, but you're right. For the most part, no one has been able to exert extreme pressure on Bradford. There's obviously a whistle. Kendall was coming free. Delay a game here. Delay a game. So after the offense for Stoops shows a very impressive opening drive, they bogged down a little bit here. Yeah, and I th again, I think I have to give all the credit to Texas and Will Muschamp here and the adjustments that they're making and the aggressiveness that they're playing with. Brad for making the adjustments, looking over for confirmation from Kale Gundy, the running back coach, and a number of other assistant coaches on the sideline there. Texas also making their adjustments. A little cat and mouse game here on third down. On the scramble, out of bounds, short of that first down indicator. Well, the key, as I said at the beginning of this game, could Texas get after Sam Bradford, get him out of his comfort zone, get him out of his rhythm, and these last two series, that's exactly what they've been able to do, and Will Muschamp is fired up. When you can get pressure with four, when you have a Rackpo up there, and also number two, Sergio Kendall applying the pressure, that makes it a lot easier to cover all those receivers. Remember, there was extreme pressure exerted on Knoll's first punt. This time, everybody drops back. Cosby runs up. Let's go down below to Lisa. 
Well, Brent, you were talking about Will Muschamp and how fired up he is on the sidelines. I was talking to defensive end Brian Arakbo about him. He said, you know what? We've gone through four defensive coordinators in five seasons. So we just thought, here we go. Here's another guy. But absolutely not. This guy came in and he changed everything from our meetings to our practices. We thought he was a little nutty when he uh, cut himself during the first game of the season and left the blood just dripping down his face. But he said, that's just how emotional the guy is, and we love it. <laughs> he was born fired up, that fella. Here's McCoy going deep one on one. Incomplete. Justin Tucker. And that was the coverage by Jackson. Yeah, Brian Jackson. And Bob Stoops has talked all year about the secondary from Oklahoma playing well. He gets back in great position there and gets up, finds the football, most importantly, and is able to knock that ball away from Williams, who has great size. But good coverage on the boundary there by, by Brian Jackson. Yeah, let me correct myself. That was the other nine, Malcolm Williams and not Justin Tucker. And obviously, as the wide receiver. So second down and 10. McCoy's in trouble and going to get thrown down by Jeremy Beal. These officials are coming together to talk about whether or not they're going to they're going to throw the late flag here. Beal comes in. Beal has such tremendous ability and speed here. Colt McCoy taking a chance to try to get to the outside. He gives him a little shake, thinking he can get by him. But this is Oklahoma, and this is this is an Oklahoma defensive end that can run, and they call the intentional grounding, and he uh, obviously loses a lot of yards. But that speed up front, Colt has got to be able to have an awareness of how quickly they're closing in on him. The sooner muscle in that defensive line is starting to exert itself. Inside shuttle pass. Obanaya against that rush. Fine call by the coordinator. Lewis makes the stop. When you got him stomping and breathing just to pick up a few yards and then get the punting team out of the field. Final seconds of the opening quarter. Pretty good defenses here in the first quarter. You know, after Oklahoma made the adjustments, or after Texas made the adjustments to that first touchdown, and you know Oklahoma can run. Ryan Broyles now on the field to return this goal punt. And he signals for the fair catch at the 26 yard line, and that's where they'll put it in play. Well, let's remind everybody the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series, Bank of America 500 at Charlotte on ABC tonight. Under the lights in Charlotte, this will be a good one, folks. Carl Edwards, Greg Biffle, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jeff Gordon all look to bounce back after getting caught up in that big one at Talladega last week. Jimmy Johnson, can he do it again? Can he three-peat? Tune in tonight, 7 Eastern on ABC. First and 10. Folks, the left tackle for Oklahoma. Watch big load hold over there when you get a chance as Bradford moves back to the right. He's going to pull it down frequently. There's great work by the secondary as the seconds tick away here in the first quarter. Here is Ignite Your Senses. You buy uh, coupons there, Kirk, and you buy yourself a fried banana split, and I tell you, that will ignite your senses. <laughs> Among other things, right? <laughs> The remodeled Cotton Bowl. And they did a fine job. Now holds about 92,000. Ticket sales split evenly. Here's Bradford. Pump fake. Trying to get down the near sideline, and he does to an open receiver that time. And that is Ryan Broyles, the redshirt freshman from Norman. A little bit of play action here. They get Texas got pressure again on Sam Bradford, but it was just a, a well-designed play. I could, you could see right there the safety Earl Thomas comes out thinking it's going to be a flanker screen and it left a big opening there for Broyles. Bradford not taking much time and he completes another one to Broyles. 
That's the big difference this year with Oklahoma. When they get first downs, they're up at the line of scrimmage, and they're attacking the defense. And the whole reason Kevin Wilson has decided to do this, number one, he has a quarterback that understands how to do it, but put the pressure on the defense and put them on their heels. Rolling back to the left for a first down, and it is Broyles who has caught three consecutive passes, and you can see that coaching staff roll it up tempo. Yep. Let's move it as fast as we can on this drive. And when you go up tempo again, it makes the defense lose some of their aggressiveness, which Texas has done a good job of here these last few series. Fast break on grass, and here it comes on the move. You can't blink. They'll get another snap off Murray. And he gets to the 25 yard line for a first down. McElroy making the stop. All it takes is one first down on the beginning of the drive, and it allows them to get this high octane offense going. And you hear that term a lot. It's a fast break on grass, basketball on grass. And right now, that's what Oklahoma's been able to get back to. We saw this on the first drive. Murray spins and goes down for a two yard loss in the arms of a Rakpo, number 98. There's a great battle going on up front with Lodeholt and Arakpo. How about Lodeholt? 6'8", 335 pounds going up against a very determined Brian Arakpo. Second and 11. Breaking free is Iglesias. Again, all of a sudden, there's rhythm. There's, there's an ability by Bradford now to have uh, time to throw, but it's crossing routes. It's, it's running the football. It's dumping it underneath the broils. A lot of different looks. Now they're coming out in an empty set, making Texas think. First and goal and not hesitate. Moving the pocket right and left. Receive juggle. Caught in the end zone on a ricochet. Touchdown. Broyles caught it. Royals caught the ricochet from Jermaine Grisham. You'll see it. Coming right at you. Grisham is all low, and the safety Thomas comes up to make the hit, and the football just falls right into the hands of Ryan Broyles for a touchdown. And Brent Grisham never had possession, so this was going to be an incompletion, and Broyles just does, with the fingertips, hold the football up off the ground for the touchdown. Coach, let's put that one in the playbook. <laughs> yeah, right. Instant replay will take a look at this one. Uh, they might have missed one earlier on Oklahoma's first touchdown. This appears to be a touchdown that the ball does not, although it was close, wasn't it, when yeah, he reached it, down? It, it I sure was. So we'll take that one angle right here. Now, take a look at this and see if the ball does skim the top of the grass. No, nope. that's a touchdown. There's, there's daylight, folks. That was a great look right there. Always better to be safe than sorry as we there learned in that first daylight. touchdown. Yes, indeed. Right man in the right spot. Royals had a big start to the season against the University of Cincinnati where he had seven catches for 141 yards. And you add Royals to Iglesias and Manuel Johnson and Grisham. Four really, four really talented targets for Sam Bradford. It's former OU quarterback Josh Heupel, the quarterback coach, talking with Bradford along with Bob Stoops. Jimmy Stevens back on. It is 14-3. Up tempo. Wow. A lovely day in Dallas. 14-3. Mm. Sooners lead the Longhorns. Matt Moreland. Ball on the tee for the Sooners. Return from the five yard line is Shipley. Big hole. Shipley in zone ahead, folks. Touchdown, Longhorns. There is one flaw with this Oklahoma team, and it is their special teams.
Colt McCoy's roommate took matters into his own hands that time. That's his eighth touchdown overall of the season. 96 yards. Hunter Lawrence. Tacks on the extra point. Game on in Big D. Pull up a chair, folks. This one's going to get real interesting. Three million in attendance expected here to the State Fair of Texas, which will extend on into mid October. Started back earlier this month. And yeah, and interested bystanders. It's about time us rascals got one of the end zone down there. He said, Mr. Shipley, with his first kickoff return ever for a touchdown, and Bebo enjoyed that very much. This is going to be returned from the 12 yard line. Iglesias. Thought about lateraling, and uh, ball was taken out of his hands as he was going down, I believe. And uh, <laughs> let's go back to Be the careful. Play <laughs> well, let's go back to the play and, and special teams in these kind of games typically mean so much. Look at the wedge right in the middle, and what a great job here by Obanaya and also Eddie Jones picking up the block. And then for Shipley, it's just a matter of hitting that crease and then beating the kicker with tremendous quickness. But it was all set up by a nice job there by the wedge in creating a seam for Shipley to hit. Inside handoff to Murray. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. And uh, let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. We want to show you the two quarterbacks because, of course, we're going to be focusing on them all day long. You can see that Bradford has the upper hand, but the Better Roommate Award right now goes to the <laughs> Texas quarterback. There's no doubt. The big difference is the rushing yards and the touchdowns. Those are the two things that right now are the difference between the quarterbacks. Fake the end around, roll the pocket out, hit Murray in underneath. And he's a yard short of that first down marker, Muckleroy. Same exact play. Sorry, Brent, the same exact play that allowed Murray to pick up a, a big gain early in this game where he came out, snuck out into the flat off of the fake reverse, and went down the sidelines for about 35 yards. Texas. Time out is called by the defense. <laughs> Enough of that high octane offense. We need to get a timeout, catch our breath. Muschamp, of course, was the defensive coordinator at Auburn last year. And time for uh, our Affleck trivia question. Yeah, the duck says, "Okay, Kirk, you got me last week with I this, know. the state." <laughs> what is Mac Brown's connection to Oklahoma? I know. Gave that. you a layup this I week. know. Gave you a layup. I know that. Don't give it away. Okay. There might be a couple people out there who don't know the answer. Okay. I'll give you the decade. Is that a good hand? That's for the good. There's uh, Mac, his wife Sally, over in the booth uh, right next to us. Of course, they were up in Colorado last week and. Sally was out hiking and broke her arm. Arms in a cast, but uh, she's recovering nicely. They're rooting for the Longhorns. Matt Clapp and now Chris Brown in that backfield on a third and one. They check with Kevin Wilson to see what he wants to do. Brown behind the fullback. Big crease for the first down. Let's go to Matt Weiner in New York. Matt. Hi Matt and here Bradford on the play action is sacked for the first time and he's brought down by you know who folks there is a great defensive lineman that of course Brian Arakpo the senior from Houston well, he's finally healthy and we're see seeing what a healthy Arakpo can do there's the matchup we talked about lone hole with the size but not the lateral quickness and Arakpo goes with an inside move and what speed to get upfield and get after Bradford. Yeah, there's a 300 plus pounder who didn't move his feet. 
second and 19 as a result. Drop in that middle screen underneath Emmanuel Johnson. He is ridden down by Dion Beasley. This offense picks up chunks of yardage so quickly. Little jailbreak screen. We've seen Johnson have a lot of success with that play specifically, picking up huge yards, and all of a sudden, second long moves to third and short. Stands tall in the pocket, has all day, and wide open is Gresham. Headed in zone. Touchdown, Sooners. How about that for a downfield tight end? That's 52 yards. Well, this is broken coverage by Texas. You see the young safety that time. Earl Thomas jumping up on the underneath route, and they lost focus on Grisham. Broken coverage all alone, and then the big fella shows the speed to get to the end zone. That's sometimes the casualty of having two freshman safeties in the lineup for the Texas Longhorns. Jimmy Stevens adds the extra point. Didn't take him long to get it back, did it? And uh, looks like we've got a penalty flag down there by the line of scrimmage. So, tax on the extra point and then the penalty. Double whammy for the Longhorns, huh? We'll be right back. State Fair of Texas. Not everybody's on the inside, huh? And here it's 21 10. And how about Sam Bradford? Three touchdown passes here today for number 14. Watch this offense, and you really ask yourself, can anybody slow these guys up? He's 14 of 16 for 210 yards, and those three scores were mentioned. Just when it looked like Texas was defensively containing Bradford, putting pressure on Bradford, a couple series later, he put those numbers up. And wow. that penalty, of course, yeah. takes Shipley out of it. They'll be kicking it off from the 45 yard line. You would think this would be a touchback. So much for that, and back we go to the TD. Well, Emmanuel Johnson is on the outside, moving to the inside, and when he does that, what you're going to see is the big fella right here. Right here, he's going to move to the corner. The confusion by Texas comes from the backfield, the defensive backfield. Right there, the safety jumps up, and by doing that, also the linebacker comes up. Now you've got three guys covering Manuel Johnson and a tight end who maybe is the best target Oklahoma has all by himself in the back part of that secondary a mental air there for the Longhorns first down handoff John Childs back on the field the backup quarterback and all right Affleck trivia time tell us about Mac Brown his connection to OU right? I'm going to go back to 1984 I believe where Mac Brown was coaching for the Sooners and working with a backup quarterback by the name of Troy Aikman exactly there's the staff. Oklahoma, they would put 80 on you in a hurry. He was there only one year. Penalty flag is thrown on the play. Pass is complete, but again, there is a penalty. Had a free play there. Like Oklahoma, Clayton getting a little ahead of himself on the Off blitz. Side. Defense number 22. Five yard penalty. Repeat second down. During breaks, we keep talking about how important it is for Mac Brown's offense to come up with big plays to get the big kickoff return. But now this offense pinned back deep in their own territory. They've got to come up with a drive. They've got to come up with points against this Oklahoma defense because the Sooners are scoring right now at will offensively. That's Kirkendall in motion, number 11. Another flat penalty. Uh, 
Horns may have given this one back. Oh. Movement on both sides. Prior to the snap, offside. offside. Defense, number 96. With the five yard penalty, first down. Marcus Granger back in playing after missing a couple games with an injury. A little anxious on that side of the football right now. There's Granger. Abanaya throwing for a loss by that defense and Travis Lewis the redshirt freshman from San Antonio makes the stop. This is one of these Oklahoma defenses that you've got to be able to run right at them or throw the football right at them. If you try to bounce it against this speed that we see now from these linebackers Travis Lewis on one side Keenan Clayton on the other and Ryan Reynolds right in the middle. They move too well. I'm talking about four five and four four forty speed from these outside linebackers. Second and 11. Completes it to his roommate and he gets across that first down marker. Jordan Shipley. He has the horns touchdown on that kickoff return. Quarterbacks and receivers that are roommates always seem to be in sync, don't they? Mm -hmm. Hours and hours of coaches aren't around, other teammates aren't around in May and June and July, and you just throw. Day after day, and you get into a very comfortable rhythm, and you can see Colt McCoy and Jordan Shipley definitely have that. The bluff on the blitz. McCoy snaps it off short, goes back to Shipley. Dominic Franks, the corner. The defender for a year. That's a nice job there by Greg Davis again going with a look that they haven't shown a lot of this year Four wide receivers. They put Shipley right in the slot. They forced Oklahoma to go with a safety in the middle of the field. When you do that there are a lot of openings in that zone defense from this Sooner de defense and give Colt McCoy credit for finding those holes. Quarterback draw. Back to the line of scrimmage and no more after that because of Lewis. As you look at the Oklahoma team in the flesh, Kirk, I think you would agree this team is built for speed. This is a lean, mean football team. You and I have seen a lot of these top teams that are up in the top five, top seven in the BCS, and athletically, Oklahoma doesn't take a back seat to anybody. With that many athletes, I am really surprised that they don't defend kicks well. Complete down the sideline. He snapped it off to Cosby. The defensive back gambled that time. Jackson couldn't get to the ball. Boy, Jackson a couple times here coming close to making big plays for the Sooners defense. Colt McCoy going back to the boundary. This is a tight throw. You've got to throw it away from the defender. Not only a great throw. But also amazing concentration here by Quan Cosby to be able to bring in the football and then turn up field to pick up a first down. First and 10 at the Sooners 35. Open to the left. McCoy, a good runner, will take off. And then that should leave him in second and short. That's what Colt McCoy has been able to do for this Texas offense this year. When you account for 68% of your offense, it's creativity, it's imagination, and the ability to improvise. And there's the balance so far, and they've not been able to obviously get their running game going. And Brent, I think that was everybody's concern. With Colt McCoy as your leading rusher, how can Texas run the football against this athletic Oklahoma defense? Obanaya is off to his right on second and one. Obanaya will try to stretch the defense, not going to get there. Terrific defense. English stretched the play out, and then Jackson was able to come up and make the tackle. But credit English, 
for making Obanaya run wide on this play. Bounced him to the outside, and then as much as we want to give credit to Quan Cosby for his ability to make a catch, he has got to do a much better job there of sustaining his block on Brian Jackson. Jackson got inside of him and made an easy play there in the open field. Third and two. Throw for it as the run game bogs down. He does just that. Hits Cosby for the first down and more. Wow. What, an, what a great job by Colt McCoy. This is a tight window. You've got eight defenders from Oklahoma dropping, many of which went right to the first down marker, and they all had their head on a swivel. He had about five Oklahoma defenders at about the four-yard mark trying to find a receiver to take away. They were there, but the accuracy for McCoy is the difference. We'll see if they throw on first and goal immediately and not wait. No, they're going to throw on first down. This will be second and goal. From just across the three yard line, Cosby again. But I think this is so revealing about the Texas running game or lack thereof when you come up and start firing on first down out of the shotgun when you've got a first and goal. Well said, Brent. And you got to wonder now inside the five yard line, can Texas continue to have success throwing these tight? small windows now because it gets so much tighter with such little room to work with against this defense. Move the pocket to the right. Shipley's on that side. They throw in underneath down at the one yard line. It was a great play call. Moving the pocket away from the pressure. Oklahoma came after him. And if Colt McCoy gets this ball up a little bit to Shipley, he walks into the end zone. So the matchup and the call, perfect. It was just a matter of execution there and a rare misfire, even though he completed it, a rare misfire by Colt McCoy. All right, Jumbo is on for the Horns. This will be the Jumbo look. You remember Loki and those guys. Well, it'll be Miller. He'll set in front of Johnson. Open eyes off to the left. This is their jumbo look. Third and goal. Johnson behind Miller going to the corner. Stretches for the pylon. Touchdown. Texas answers again. We saw the return, and then this time the big fella, Cody Johnson, nimble feet. Looked like he may have stepped out of bounds, but the nimble feet there to get the ball crossed for a touchdown. Lawrence tacks on the point. A 12 play. 80 yard drive consuming 642. Texas best drive of this game so far by far. Respond again Kirk. Well I mentioned it looked like he may have stepped out of bounds but first watch the block by the big defensive tackle Miller who blows up but right here he steps out of bounds but the ball looks like it crosses the plane before the foot steps out of bounds. You can see it get right there get across and then the right foot comes out of bounds for a touchdown for the Horns. How about the big Miller the big defensive tackle getting in there and is bulldozing the Oklahoma defense. And then for a couple of years it was Derek Lowkey back there yeah. leading the way and now it is Miller. Still uh, the good news Texas just scored. The bad news is Sam Bradford and this Oklahoma offense they've got 341 left in the first half. That's a lifetime. They could have a couple possessions in 341. Texas and Colt McCoy showing a lot of guts on that drive. From a yard deep, Murray. Middle return. And Brown brings him down. Let's head to New York. Matt Weiner for a Sports Center right now, Matt.
First and ten for the Sooners coming out from their own 27. Inside handoff. Chris Brown back on the field after Murray returned the kickoff. And big Henry Milton with the stop. We talked so much about Sam Bradford and his wide receivers. This offensive line has done a pretty good job here in this first half, too. A lot of time. Drops it in underneath in that time to Iglesias. It's Texas defense flying around here, and they, they, where they get into trouble isn't necessarily in the first couple plays, it's after Sam Bradford picks up a first down. Third and three. Roll pocket. Throw downfield. Intercepted on a beautiful grab at the 35 yard line by Earl Thomas. How about the freshman's athletic ability and closing speed? To be able to beat Broyles to the spot and then lay out and make an interception. He easily beats him there, but then he lays out. Great concentration, gets his body turned, but it was the pressure that forced Bradford to throw the ball. Look at Sergio Kendall from the backside blowing up Sam Bradford and making him throw the ball before he wanted to. Our first turnover. Two forty six Palmer shake it up on the play. Head on over. Well, coming up now on the Cooper Tire halftime report John Craig and Doug will have highlights from today's early action not a lot going on right now but as the day moves on it's going to get busier and busier. And uh, the guys here with the game day game. Chris Lee they'll take a look and meanwhile I'll take a break well, I have to pass that up till after the game <laughs> oh you're beautiful. Tell you, folks, that you're was beautiful you're beautiful first down and 10 ball out of the 33 yard line and here comes Colt McCoy show blitz and they're coming couldn't get there. Got one on one and a beautiful snare. Cosby grabs it. So the blitz backfires and Texas is in business. Brent, you're dead on here. The linebackers come right up the middle. But what it does is it leaves Oklahoma's secondary one on one. The ball is thrown high. And how about a Cosby adjusting to the football, going up and making the catch? It's the first time all year we've seen this Oklahoma secondary, especially the new corners, being challenged by an offense. First and 10. McCoy forced to scramble this time. The defensive line for OU did a job, and he is thrown for a four-yard loss. Ryan, Ryan Reynolds getting involved there as well, and kind of the heart and soul of this defense, number eight, who's moved to the middle linebacker spot this year, this Oklahoma defense, and he's hobbling a bit. He's actually going to take a knee here. That is a that is a not a good sign to see number eight limping around out there who's battled through a number of knee surgeries to come back and be healthy this year. Have to see if he stays on the field. That was the third sack by the Sooners and this one. Nope. Colt scrambles out of trouble now drops it off incomplete well out of the pocket over toward the sideline and now there's a penalty. Is there a late hit over there by Lewis? Lewis was in pursuit. Big, big, big. Oh, that's huge, folks. This would have been third and long, and instead it'll give the horns a first down. Take a look at this. Uh, the emotion of the, of the game, but I'm going to be honest with you. That is a horrible call. And I'm a quarterback, and I that's like to protect brutal. quarterbacks. Awful call by the officials here protecting Colt McCoy. Lewis comes up and barely, barely. Uh, it touches almost looks like Colt he was trying McCoy. to hold him up. That but, was a you terrible know, his call. Hands, I, if it had happened over on Stoopsie's sideline, yeah, that's, no that's penalty, folks. 
Big break for Texas here. See Texas if they bench did a good job. First down, ball at the 20 yard line now. Go back to the running game, that inside, whatever it is, Obanaya rushing. Texas, because remember the sacks bring it off, so they've been held to minus 13, minus three total after that run by Obanaya. And OU's rush, though, for only 13. So. Yeah, not that they needed to live and die by running the football tonight, but just the ability to show that you have it because it can set up play action pass and try to slow down Oklahoma's defense. But what we've seen so far is not going to be good enough. Got to rely on Colt throwing. Well, I'm sure he will here on second and seven. Try to rush five, don't get there, and he overthrew Collins. Just as well, because there are a couple of defenders over there lurking on that sideline, too. The last series that Texas had, they went to a lot of the four wide receiver looks, and they found seams inside where the linebackers are lined up. I think here on third down, I, I'd go back to that. Try to find an area where Cosby or Shipley could work into the inside where there's some space to work against those Oklahoma linebackers. You know, without a tight end who has matured, you would think that Obaniah Kirk or one of the running backs would slip out also into a pattern here soon. Only one second left. Got it off in time on third down. He drops it off to Obaniah. Oklahoma was ready. So this will bring the field goal unit out onto the field. Boy, through the last half decade so many talented tight ends have been over there for the Longhorns in Austin and now they've had injuries in the yeah. spring and they just haven't had anybody mature in that spot. You're exactly right. Blaine Irby going down the rice game really hurt this offense. They lost Josh Markle who, Josh Marshall who was the second string tight end. And that's why we're seeing so much for uh, wide receiver sets today. Say if they're able to hit this field goal. They're going to bring it on down so that Bradford doesn't get it back. That's one of the first. Kind of it's one of the better first halves that we've seen. They can make it 21 20 here. Yeah. So, so we'll take a quick timeout, then we'll come back and see if the field goal is successful. Field goal, our last play of the first half. Attempting to make this a one point game and setting up what should be a fine second half here in Dallas. Play puts it down on the spin. We got a one pointer in the cotton bowl. Let's go down to Lisa. Thanks a lot, Brent. Coach, you guys, Texas wasn't really able to do anything offensively until that big 80 yard drive. What changed defensively for you guys? Uh, nothing changed. They executed. Uh, Colt McCoy made some nice throws and some space. Um, and then we had a bunch of penalties. We've had a bunch of offsides that have hurt and a personal foul on the quarterback. Sam Bradford, just his fourth interception. What happened on that play? Uh, just going for a big play. Their defender made a nice play, made a diving catch. All right, thanks a lot, Coach. Back from an 11-point deficit, trailing Oklahoma just one at halftime. Chris Fowler and Lee Corso. It's not old school OU yeah. Texas. They've combined for 10 rushing yards. <laughs> Billy Sims, Earl Campbell, where are you? Now you picked Oklahoma. Your yeah. thoughts on the Sooners in the well, first half? I might half. be wrong because I tell you right now they're losing by one point. But Texas Thank is winning a game the because they proved they can come from behind. Observations from the sideline about Oklahoma. They're the number one team in the nation when they use a the no huddle offense. They score twice with. Defensively, they're average to below average on defense. They can on pass defense. They can't rush the pass without a blitz. They make stupid penalties on defense, and they're not a well-coached football team and a special teams. Now, they are win this football game, but they're going to have to outscore Texas. There's some frustration, almost anger in that assessment well, of the team you picked in the first you know, half. Texas gets the ball to start the second half. What would you do differently for Oklahoma's defense? Just let them score, get the ball back, and score some more, because that's the only way they're going to beat Texas. Well, keep that in Cole mind. McCoy can play. Texas has had to answer. Neither team has been in a close game. We'll see. The second half coming up. The CSBN presentation of college football on ABC returned to these messages and a word from our ABC stations. Executing. Big kickoff return. Now you're down 21 to 10 because Bradford comes right back. Boy, here comes Texas and Colt McCoy again. They had a big interception. Now we're at 21-20. Texas showed a lot of heart and character there in that first half. So we'll see what happens. Remember now, Texas won the flip. And deferred. That means they will get the first possession and a chance to take their first lead in the afternoon if they can do something with it. 
and it is fielded a yard deep in the end zone. Cosby is down at the 24 yard line. Well, time for our best five playbook. There were some big plays here. Yeah, early in this game, how about the breaks falling in the favor of the Oklahoma Sooners? Broyles makes a big catch. A broken coverage here by Texas led to a Grisham touchdown. One of his three catches in the first half. I mentioned Shipley. Big return when the Longhorns were down. They got him right back into the game, and they got another opportunity. Got the ball back to Colt McCoy, and here we are. What a first half. 21 to 20, a one-point lead for the Sooners. Four wide receivers on the field for the Horns. Open eye. He's to Colt McCoy's right. Now he goes out as a receiver. Everybody's covered. Down he goes. Big Gerald McCoy. Let's take a look at the Pacific Life game summary. We have focused on these two quarterbacks, of course, all game long. And you can see that Bradford has a little bit of edge in the passing, although he does have that one interception. It's just amazing to look at the completion percentage coming into this game. And then still, both guys having a great game. Bradford with the three touchdowns. And Colt hasn't been able to do much of anything, considering he leads this team in rushing. He's not been able to do much with his feet against the speed of Oklahoma's defense. Second down and long. Snaps it off underneath. Puts it in the hands of Cosby. You know, uh, Kirk, I thought that Lee was Corso was a little overly critical of this Oklahoma defense. I, I've got to tell you, I think this defensive line is one of the better groups that I have seen. Hey, you and I are on the same page. The Sunshine Scooter was tearing apart these suitors because he picked them and they didn't dominate in the first half the way he would have liked to have seen. I'm with you. Here, Brent, I want to show you. In, sure. in, the, in the first half, they had a lot of success with the, you have multiple receivers right in this area right here. Matt Brown mentioned at least the Solars. They found some spacing that they liked, and that's the area that they have to have the ability to throw. Third and ten goes long and incomplete, and the receiver was well covered. They were sending James Kirkendall long, and uh, Texas forced a punt. Broyles. Broyles had an interesting first half. Caught three passes in a row and then a ricochet for a touchdown. All on one, one series. Now he's set to return John Gold's punt. Gold drives him back inside the 25 yard line. Stays on his feet with great balance. Gets to the 40, 45, and out of bounds near midfield. Tremendous balance by the punt returner. 24 yard return. The Gunners get downfield. Beasley's there to make the catch, but Broyles just makes a play on him, cuts inside. And Oklahoma's punt return team did a great job of stepping back and not pushing any of the Texas defenders into the back and causing a penalty. And here come the Sooners. Great field position again for Sam Bradford. And let's see how quickly they're able to get a first down to get that high octane offense going again. Daniel Johnson he's off to the left. You can see four receivers and now they put Grisham in motion. We come back with Murray on the run for a yard before he is stopped by McElroy who was the leading tackler for the Horns in the first half. One of the keys to this game was the battle in the trenches. And Oklahoma's had some moments when they've been able to play well, give Bradford time. But the thing that I think has been key and allowed Texas to stay in this game is their front four has played exceptionally well because of the speed and athletic ability that they have up front. Especially Arakpo. He had the sack in the first half. 98 could not get there. The throw is in underneath, short of the first down, and that's Grisham. But Blake Gideon, a true freshman, 6'1", about 197 pounds, playing in the OU Texas game. Grew up in the state of Texas, coach's son, but a true freshman, has dreamed about this opportunity his whole life, and he's out there playing against the Sooners and playing a very good game. Third and four, Kevin Wilson's play call comes down from up above. Rockpo was closing in and he hit Johnson. Johnson breaking to daylight. Out of bounds, Oklahoma football. Mm -hmm. 
You know they're going to go no huddle here and try to push the Longhorns to get them on their heels. When you see this play, it's so important to get behind your blocks and at the same time not get caught from behind. Lamar Houston, the big defense alignment, almost caught him from behind. Incomplete second down and 10. Murray, the running back, was the target that time. No U empties the backfield out. Arakpo trying to get a move here on Lodeholt. Lodeholt got his body in front of him, couldn't get any pressure on him, but incomplete. And the matchup that Will Muschamp was most concerned about, especially in the red zone, was Grisham against his linebackers and against his safeties. And in many times, they've had to use two defenders to take Grisham out of this red zone look from Oklahoma. And here's Grisham right now, the linebacker, Muckleroy. The defense changes its call late. Muckleroy goes over to the other side now, and they're going to put three down. Set a screen. Johnson cuts to the end zone. Touchdown OU. Perfect call against that defense. The fourth touchdown pass of the game by Sam Bradford. This is how you make a defense pay for the blitz. Watch Beasley 7 come to the inside and look at the block by 7 and Crimson. DeMarco Murray buries him to the inside, and there's nobody left to the outside and plenty of space again for Johnson, who has made a living on that play, not only today, but all year for this Sooner offense. Stevens makes it an eight-point margin, 28-20. Oh, you strikes the first time they handle the ball here in the second half. Brought to you by Pioneer's new Kuro. With Lisa Salters and Kirk Herb Street, I'm Brad Musburger welcoming you back to the Cotton Bowl and the Red River rivalry. An eight point lead for the Sooners who have led all the way here today. Sam Bradford has thrown four touchdown passes and he's closing in on another 300 yard game. Every game this year, he has thrown for more than 300 yards and he will try to extend it against Texas here this afternoon. The Horns if you weren't with us had one kickoff return for a touchdown by Shipley. Cosby's coming out from about two yards and he's well short. He's down at the 10 yard line. That time the Sooners covered a kick. Well let's light him up at Charlotte on ABC tonight folks 7 p.m. This should be a dandy the Bank of America 500. The chase is on and they're all chasing the two time winner Jimmy Johnson number 48 can he keep it going Edwards Biffle well within striking distance Jeff Burton's only 99 points out and again tonight ABC Bank of America 500 gorgeous day I hope the weather in Charlotte's as good as it is here in Dallas this afternoon first down at 10 now for Colt McCoy and the horns can they respond again option look Obanaya. For about seven yards on that first down. They get about six yards actually. And each time they've been down, yeah. back they've come. I think they impressed you and I and probably most of America. Texas down in the first half, showing a lot of backbone, fighting their way back. Uh, some big plays, the kickoff return, Colt McCoy's made plays. But now here they are again, find themselves trailing. Can they show that that attitude and that toughness that they've shown and execute when the pressure is on them the way they did in the first half? I think we've got an injured. Sooner down on the field, Kirk. Did you see who that is? I think it's Nick Harris. Ooh, that'd be big. Yeah, that's safety. Nick. Yeah. Nick's a he's the ringleader back there now. Is oh, it Reynolds? Is, oh boy, Let's check it's that. Even worse. Ryan, Ryan, apologize. I thought that was five, but you know, Brent, Ryan Reynolds, who's had again two knee surgeries. They've been so happy and so proud of him the way he's worked back. He finally has been healthy this year and been the leader of that defense right in the middle this year at middle linebacker. Was he a little gimpy in the first half yeah, and he stayed yeah. out on the field? Don't I remember sure that uh, yeah. scene? 
hate to see young man from Las Vegas, as is the uh, the running back, of course, on that team, DeMarco Murray. He's been instrumental this year, moving to the middle and helping Travis Lewis. That's Brandon Crow who would replace him. And let me remind everybody that near the end of the game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. And Chevrolet again will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. It's good to see Reynolds coming off under his own power. So we'll keep a close eye on that, as I'm sure many Sooner fans are holding their breath, knowing how important he is to this defense. Second and four. So here we go. 11 10 left in the third quarter. Inside handoff, trying to get a running game going, and nothing doing. That time was Vondrell McGee, his first carry of the game from scrimmage. Boy, this this defensive line Lee Corso or anybody else can say whatever they want about them. They are physical and they're athletic and again I said it in the first half I'll say it now if you're going to run against Oklahoma you've got to try to get upfield in a hurry. It's one of these defenses because of their speed the longer you take and hesitate and try to bounce it there's about six or seven red jerseys right in your face. Minus five that's a Texas rush yardage here comes the blitz they set the middle. And they've got it for a first and ten out to the 25 yard line Brandon Collins. Well, they brought the blitz and because Texas did such a good job of giving Colt McCoy time there's the blitz up the middle there's nobody left in the middle perfect time to call this by Greg Davis and I think Brandon Collins could be a factor in this game before it's all said and done. He has the same quickness that you see from Cosby and Shipley. Keep attacking the seams in the middle where those linebackers are there's a lot of room to work for Colt. Throwing on first down and it's complete for four yards as he snapped it off to Shipley. You know, the one thing that uh, I'm sure is weighs on Greg Davis in mind right now. As the play caller upstairs and you're working against a team, you're, you're down by eight points. That's the most important stat. But Oklahoma had just scored in a minute and a half. So the one thing you'd like to do is to go the hard way, go the distance, take about five or six minutes off the clock and still get your team a touchdown. So his purpose is not just to score right now which obviously that's number one but dumping off right there for a first down Obaniah slipping out of the backfield and now he's John away with Travis Lewis the linebacker over there on that on that far side. And Ray, you, you and I were talking at a break how important it was when they had one of their big drives to get back into the game that not only did they drive the length of the field but they took over six minutes off the clock and kept Sam Bradford over there Absolutely. on the sidelines drinking water. And that's what Colt McCoy will look to do. And it's not, yeah, you're right, yeah, exactly not, not just moving the ball, but trying to keep Bradford on the sideline. Continues to, now McCoy's going to take off. Got himself a nice gain on first down. Probably about second and two or three coming up. English makes the stop on the Longhorn quarterback. Nice job by Colt McCoy. Another solid decision. Greg Davis telling us this week, most important thing in being able to execute against this athletic Sooner defense is decision making and the poise of Colt McCoy. That's essential. And with this being his third game in this rivalry, he understands that patience is very important. And we've seen that demonstrated tonight. Well, but I've got the first down and then some. Breaks into a Sooner territory to the 25 yard line. Jackson hauls him down, but not before he picked up 30 yards. And they finally hit one here, and it's just a, a simple zone read. It's the give look. And here is Obaniah getting in. Once he gets to the second level, he gives a little shake there against this Oklahoma secondary, and he goes right by the safety who's coming up to make a play. That is so important because that will open up the play action pass for Colt McCoy when you start to run like that. And let's go back to that injury suffered by the middle linebacker of Oklahoma. That left a big hole. First down, they come right back to the middle and Shipley close to another first down, attacking the middle of the field. That's exactly where they, I keep saying, that's exactly the area to attack 
in this defense, right where the linebackers are. Again, a blitz. This time, Holmes ends up coming. If you pick up the blitz, there's a lot of room to work for these Texas wide receivers in one-on-one -on -one opportunities. Shipley, the ball's a little high, secures it, sets up a second and short. In the red zone, down by eight. McCoy kept it himself. Got the first down and stepped out at about the 10 yard line. I tell you, you think Colt McCoy doesn't have speed? Watch this. Comes off the figure. That's a corner. He outruns to the corner himself and then picks up a first down. Colt McCoy has four or five speed. For those of you who aren't familiar with that, that's fast. He can move. <laughs> He just happened to follow one of the best athletes in the history of college football, so people assume he can't run. Yeah, that's a very good point. And uh, he stepped in that huddle with all those graybeards, and that was hard to become a leader, but he has certainly grown up now. There he drops a screen off himself, and inside the five is his roommate, Jordan Shipley. This is as good as it gets in college football. We've talked so much about Sam Bradford and all that he's doing for the Sooners, and just when it looks like the Longhorns maybe just can't match up with Oklahoma, Colt McCoy counters, and he answers the bell, comes right back down. Now let's see if they can get it into the end zone. This is a heck of a drive again by Texas. Two big play calls coming up here. Quarterback draw, not going to get it done. Lewis, the linebacker, was the first wrap up the Horns quarterback, and that's going to leave Max offense with a third and goal. Think about it. This offense, they really don't have the consistency in running the football, and this is where it hurts you in this offense. They don't have a threat of a tight end, so it's a little bit, they're, they're, they almost have one hand tied behind their back trying to execute in these areas against the Sooners. So here's your 12th play of this drive. For the most part, they have stopped McCoy from hurting them while running. He's going to throw for it. Got a man open. Touchdown, Texas Shipley again. Another answer by this gutty Longhorn team right now against a very talented OU squad. Patience by number 12. Watch Shipley work his way eventually right here. Nice job of Colt waiting, waiting, finally gets it. Nice touchdown pass and a sensational job by that big offensive line of Texas to give him the time that he needed. Lawrence tacks on the extra point. Back to one again. And on we go. <laughs>27-yard line, Kirk. Let's go back. Well, Crow is right in the middle, obviously, of this defense. And I want you to watch that as Colt McCoy has time. Look at him looking around, a bit confused. And we're not, we're not piling on. We're not saying, boy, he's making mistakes. It's the hesitation, and we're going to watch throughout this game how Brandon Crow steps in for clearly the leader of this defense in Ryan Reynolds, number eight. And it was Greg Davis, like an experienced play caller, attacking the weakness of the defense. Just like you'll see tomorrow and Monday night, and Sunday night football. It's like a shark sees blood in the water, and here they come. First and ten now for Bradford and OU. Inside handoff to Chris Brown. Let's go to Matt Weiner in New York for an update, Matt.
Bradford forced to throw this one and there's going to be a penalty on it. There is no foul for intentional granting the quarterback was outside the tackle and the ball crossed the line of scrimmage. Personal foul roughing the passer. Wow. Just when and Texas thought they were going to have a big break. First down. They get one as Henry Melton is assessed. Ooh. Yeah, it looks like Henry Melton coming from the right side here comes up and underneath the face mask and comes down on top of Bradford. You couldn't tell because that was so slow, but it, it was definitely a late hit there. We saw one earlier that was a horrendous call. This one, a better call and a tough break for Texas and Suiters. That's the last thing Sam Bradford need is to be able, needs is to be able to catch a break. Offensive line for the Sooners. Holds in about a three or four yard game by Brown. Let's go to Lisa. Well, Brenda, just trying to get a little bit of information about Ryan Reynolds' injury. Uh, just from where I'm standing, I could see that they were working on his right knee, and you could actually hear him cry out that he has quite a bit of pain in that knee. Just look, he's kept his helmet on, but you can look into his eyes, and you can see him tearing up a little bit. It does not appear that he would be coming back into this game. All right, Lisa. Second down and six. Fake the inside handoff. Bam! Fumble! Oh, you picks it up. The big tackle, Load Holt, picked it up. They're going to be working on him in a film room. Yeah. Load Holt, get down on top of that football, okay? Don't try to pick it up exactly. and make like a fullback. Don't do that. Okay. Please just fall on a big fella. <laughs> a rack pole coming off the edge with such speed is able to get to Sam Bradford. And Sam Bradford's got to feel this coming off a play action fake. Arakpo too quick that time for load hold. Here's Murray. Slipped out as a receiver. Short of midfield. Beasley was in on that stop. Aaron Williams, the freshman. I think, I think Bob Stoops and his offensive staff, Kevin Wilson, had seen enough of Arakpo. That time they put a tight end, Brody Eldridge on Arakpo to try to keep him out of that backfield, but to no avail, Sooners come up short. Well, the one thing you should know about Eldridge is they, is when they go to Jumbo, they put him in that backfield. A year ago, he was a big time blocking fullback, lead blocker. Mike Nall, back to punt now for the Sooners, and Texas with a golden opportunity if they can cash in. He's gonna fake it. Nall takes off, right side open. A little short, according to the Texas coaching staff. The spot will tell it. Aquina is up over there on the sideline. If the yellow marker is accurate, it is turned over on downs. Remember, it was fourth and six. Did they get five or did they get six? Bob Stoops lives by the sword and sometimes dies by the sword deep in his or not deep in his own territory but in his own territory fourth and long takes a gamble to see if it paid off. About to see an emotional Longhorn sideline. Longhorn football. Aquinas team does the job. You Last year, the co-defensive coordinator, Kirk, I'm sorry, and uh, this year working with the special teams, yeah. too. You know when you take on Bob Stoops, at any point, you might get this. Nall shows some quickness. It looked like he might be able to pick it up, but from the backside, Curtis Brown catches up to him and brings him down just about six to eight inches short of the first down. A big, big gamble here by Bob Stoops. Now they're going to review the spot. So instant replay will take another look. You can see where you thought the ball was down. Let's give you a good look. I like the effort here from Brown three right there. He misses him never gives up on the play and without that effort 
Null picks up a first down. Spot's pretty good. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. First down. Well, what a turn of events here. Ball goes back to Colt McCoy, who's had a couple real good possessions, and Null not used to running and using those hamstrings. In the full sprint, maybe have a bit of an issue there with his left leg. Middle linebacker gone. Hunter down. Lead by a point. Colt McCoy a chance. Play fake. Going to put it up on first down. Can't find a receiver. He's going to take off. Got a first down and some. Lewis gets him out of bounds. Is there another flag? There is. That's the second on the young man, and I think the reason why is both times it's occurred on the Longhorn sideline. He is fired up. Bob Stoops fired up and frustrated. Eight. The 28. Unnecessary run. 15 yard penalty. First down. Well, it's an 18 yard gain, and you tap on another 15. Let's see if Lewis comes up short. Well, boy, it looks like he, Cole McCoy just fell. But Both Lewis, times he's gone yeah, down. He just falls. Both times he's gone down. Look at his hand Lewis is not is pushing him down. He's trying to grab his waist and hold him up. Second. Steady himself. That's the, the second bad call. Hey, the best That's like officials. soccer. What's Cole McCoy doing? That's soccer when they fall down. <laughs> what is this? Best officials, Texas assistant coaches. First down <laughs> and 10. Ball is at the Sooner 20. Open eye out. Slashes outside. Travis Lewis did not incur the penalty, but he was looking around that time as he took the running back down. Right. Yeah, Poor am I gonna, Travis. Am I going to get called listen, again? This is not flag football, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. I'm going to play a little bit out here. As this game continues on, both teams have not been tested for four quarters. You wonder the mindset. The mental physical conditioning, how they're ready to go here on a hot day as they get pushed into the fourth quarter. Takes off again. Can he get the first down? No. Lewis again, who has been all over the field. We've talked so much about Ryan Reynolds, the leader of this defense, going down with, a, it appeared, another knee injury. And Crow stepping up with that means Travis Lewis, even though he's a freshman, and Keenan Clayton on the other side, they now have to step up and make plays and provide the leadership with Brandon Crow in there. Cody Johnson checks in. That's Cody right there, number 31, motioning out of the backfield. Play fake, looking for him, and he was covered. Terrific coverage by the Sooners, and McCoy is going to throw it. Intercepted in the end zone. Lamont Robinson. Terrific defense that time by the Sooners. Watch after this play fake. Keep a close eye on number 30 right here. Holding on to the tight end, and then after the play, or after the officials missed the holding call, the effort here to not give up, and he ends up being the guy who makes the interception. But they're lining up as though Texas is going to kick the field goal. It looks like they did not give him oh. the interception. Stoops is saying, what's going on here? Crowd is booing. They did not give him the pick. That is clear. They called. He did not hold it. So the field goal and Hunter Lawrence with a 28 yarder wow. puts the horns ahead. Brent, I saw the ball go up in the air and I thought he just released it in so celebration. Wow. In the end zone the ground clearly can cause a fumble. had the interception. The replay booth said he's losing control as he goes down. You be the official. 
Wins I don't think possession. he was ever losing possession until he hit the ground in the end zone. I'm sorry. I disagree with two of their calls. Where, where is he losing possession? He has control of the football until he until he hits the ground. So here we go. The Longhorns their first lead of the afternoon. The Red River rivalry is heated up if you can believe it. Murray to the 23 yard line and now Sam Bradford. I know got a little. Officials better take control of this game. Help decide the Pontiac game changing performance of the day. Go to ESPN.com, search Pontiac to determine which school will win $5,000 and a chance to win $100,000 at the end of the season. Ball at the 24 yard line for Sam Bradford. If you just joined us, Bradford has four touchdown passes. Kevin Wilson calling the plays from upstairs. Changing against the defensive look by the horns. Not see the horns stay there. Show blitz with a linebacker, and the running game is stuffed, and that was Moses Madu. Now I'm going to take you back to the first touchdown of the game. Okay, this is the very first touchdown of the game. They gave it six points, and clearly that knee was short of the end zone. On third down, would have set up a fourth and goal. Bradford. And out of bounds is Johnson. Bradford trying to again kind of a theme for this game for Sam Bradford has been can he get the initial first down to start the drive when they've been able to get one first down it's created the momentum with the speed of the hurry up. First down. On third and four, he goes back to Gresham. This is where, Gresham. This is where they've had success after they get the first down of getting Texas on their heels and Louis losing their aggressiveness. Not as quick this time. Taking their time. Madu's the running back. Off to the left of the quarterback. Play fake by Bradford under fire throws it incomplete. Had to throw quickly toward Johnson as Bradford was under attack that time. This is a big battle in these trenches. Constant rotation from Texas trying to keep their as many fresh bodies out on the field as they can to stay up with the speed of this execution from Sam Bradford. Now when they slow down like this, I think it plays right into the hands of Texas. This is a changeup with that clock ticking down. Running that time with Madhu as the third quarter comes to an end. The Sooner Schooner said, What's going on here? And ESPN's presentation of college football on ABC returns after the special season word from our ABC stations. By Best Buy. Crowd split in half. OU on the right. Texas on the left. 92,000. They've seen it Andy. Horns lead it, but only by two. Fast breaking OU attack coming up with a third and seven to open the fourth quarter. Setting a quick screen. Breaking Madu short of the first down. What a play by Sergio Kendall, the linebacker who's usually in third down. They move him to defensive end to try to get pressure on the quarterback this time, showing instincts, sniffing out the screen early and forcing Madu back to the inside where the rest of the defense was. Nice play by Kendall. Well, no, remember he was stretched out over that sideline. He faked the last punt, fourth and five. He'll not be faking this one. Got to get it off. Under pressure again, there's a penalty flag. 
This is going to be a first down. No matter what they call, this will be a first down. It was fourth and four. And remember, we saw the young man over on the sideline after they faked that punt. Brent, we're going to have to get rid of yellow flags and get yellow cards out here for all the acting we've seen from some of these players. And we've seen Colt McCoy go out of bounds and fall. This time, let's see if Noel how. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I, I guess if if you touch him, is that walking into? If you if you graze him? I like the end of this. <laughs> he makes but absolutely sure. Let it, let it keep going here. Now, now oh, oh, that's soccer right there. That's soccer. Stay down. Now, now grab the Stay leg. down. Stay get, down. Get ah, on that leg. Ah. <laughs> so here we go. Whatever works. They come back with Brown as the running back, and he busts a good one for a first down. We saw Oklahoma last series slow down this this uh, high octane offense. Let's see now, big first down. I think if you're Oklahoma, press the accelerator here. Try to get Texas back on their heels. That's what was working earlier, and that's what they're doing. Up. Oh. Brown's the tailback, but now they put Clap, the fullback, in front of him to lead the way. He goes for the linebacker, but still nothing much doing. Is Texas front held the ground that time. Tough yards for both these teams trying to run the football. End around, and it's big Gresham. Stretching to the 29 yard line. Well, Dion Beasley came up and run support. Dion Beasley, the corner is 5'10, 175 pounds, and Jermaine Grisham was running at 6'6, 260 pounds, coming right at him. Bradford on a third and four. Comes back with Murray. Murray's got the first down to the 20 and a penalty flag down. Looks like this one's coming back holding. Looks like they caught Trent Williams on the edge. Locked up on a Texas defender and made it very easy for Murray to get outside. Right at the bottom of your screen, Sergio Kendall. He locks him up right there, grabs onto the jersey. That's a good call by the official. So instead of first and ten, it's going to be third and long. First down, strike perfectly thrown that time to Joaquin Iglesias. A beautiful throw by Sam Bradford and a 26-yard gain. Matched up one-on-one -on -one here with Chalky Brown, but he doesn't have any support to the middle of the field. And Chalky Brown gave him an easy release to the inside, and it's the first time we've really seen Iglesias be able to get upfield and make a play, but the time was good for Bradford. He steps in and makes a very accurate throw, but a very easy, easy route that time against Brown. Play fake. Bradford on the roll. There's a penalty flag down, caught by Johnson for a touchdown, but there is a penalty flag. There's a penalty on this play. The offsides. The Texas. Oklahoma coaches are signaling we're going for two. So are they saying it was against Texas? They knew right away they're going for two. Stoops wants to put this on a six. 
How about the release here by Bradford, who I think knew that he had a free play. He does a good job of baiting the Texas defender towards him and Kendall, and then waits to the last second to find a, a very, very tight seam there. Watch how quick this release is. Wow, that's a laser right in there to Johnson. Five touchdown passes on the day for Bradford. Three touchdown receptions by Johnson. The Bradford having a big day in the Red River rivalry and a timeout is going to be called. Texas uses a timeout. So let's go back to that punt. Let's go back to how big that penalty was when Nall went down after there was contact. And on a fourth and four, the five yard penalty kept the drive alive. Here, right now, one of your key plays of this game. As the Texas player was attempting to pull away, brushed into him, and Nall did the rest. But I go back to Pryor off his fake. There was no question that he was a little shaken up following that tackle because they were stretching on that leg yeah. on the sideline exactly. prior to this. That's when I think he hurt himself. There's no way he got touched on that. Agree. <laughs> oh, a late substitution after a timeout by Texas going for two, and there's a uh, whistle. And a penalty flag. And it goes against Oklahoma. This makes us a lot tougher. See, Sigler, we're going for one. Yep, you to change it up. Yep. So here comes the kicker. The way these two teams continue to score, every point is going to matter. So. Smart, I think, to being backed up here. Smart to definitely get the that five-point lead if he's able to hit this. Yeah, it would be a lot different from the three-yard line as opposed to the eight-yard line in that situation. And so here's your redshirt freshman Jimmy Stevens. And now we've got another timeout, which means they might not have enough men on the field. When the holder does that, you'd have to wonder. <laughs> Either that or he had another fake on. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. You never know with Stoopsy. We have had a little bit of everything here today. Some great play by both teams. Lead has changed hands. Controversy involving instant replay. If you're officiating this game, you better be in shape. We've been talking so much that referee wore his battery out. It makes it a five-point game. 5:30 here in the fourth quarter. Five touchdown passes, three TD receptions by Johnson. The largest state fair of the United States. Three million folks will see it before it closes down. They've also got the largest Ferris wheel in the United States debuted back in 1985. That's 212 feet tall. Kirk, you've been up there. You've gone around. I've Ferris not. Wheel? I've not. I, I'd like to I think you and I can go up there after the game. Yeah. I, we, sure. We're used to doing the late night game. They serve cold ones up there. The <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Here we go, folks. <laughs> Fielded on the run at the eight yard line by Shipley's return one for a touchdown down at the 25. Well, folks, we've had a little bit of everything in this game. Touchdown, OU.
touchdown Texas. The fake. Comes up short. Instant replay under fire. And the Heisman Award for acting goes to our putter. <laughs> the good, the bad, and the ugly, as Clint That's Eastwood right. might say about this game. Well said. 11 and a half now for Colt McCoy. Steps off to the left. <laughs> Run out of bounds. And uh, Kirk, See our Pacific time. Life game summary. How about our two quarterbacks? Our quarterbacks are playing well. Obviously, it's been the story of the game. Bradford, five touchdowns, only one interception. But Colt McCoy, the numbers might not show it, but it's been the timing when he has stepped up and made so many big plays. When they've been trailing, Colt McCoy has been at his best. And again, late in this game, Colt McCoy and this Texas offense being challenged. Can they answer the bell again? Three down for OU on second and nine. That should be incomplete. Should be interference. It's like a defender all over the back there, Brandon Collins. Yeah, they've got it, Kirk. That's interference. Defense number 22. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. It's Clayton. Clayton, as we've talked about, very, very good in coverage, but this time just arrives a bit before Collins is there to try to make a catch. Worth mentioning again, Ryan Reynolds out of this game and Brandon Crow in at the middle of this defense, the leader out of the game. That's the fifth first down via penalty for the Longhorns. Play fake and McCoy alley open. Fumbles and battles for the ball. Marked down by the linesman right there, about nine yard gain on the play. Well, it looked like it did come out as he's extending himself and trying to get that first down. Anytime you spin, whether you're a quarterback or a running back, there's a chance that ball could come out. His knee is not down. Very, very fortunate as he fights for that football to get it back. Yeah, that was a fumble. Yep. But. But <laughs> we don't know if it would have been called. <laughs> <laughs> but how important is that Second down. with his speed and quickness to be able to pick up nine yards like that on a scramble. Open aisle. Got a first down for the horns and then some cuts it up at midfield. Let's go to Matt Weiner in New York. Matt. Just inside of 10 minutes here, the Cotton Bowl, Oklahoma leading Texas 35 30. McCoy snaps it off to Shipley. Shipley diving toward that first down marker and looks like he might get the spot. It's exactly where Brent, you and I have been talking about. That's where they need to attack this Oklahoma defense right in the middle. There are a lot of space, a lot of room to work with, and there's Crow who has stepped in for Reynolds trying to make a play. It's a mismatch with the quickness there, of Shipley. Colt is so accurate with that throw and he gets it there so quickly and accurately it gives the receiver a chance to make the catch turn up field for yardage. Pocket on the move throws in underneath the Kirkendall. If you wondered about Texas coming into this game because let's face it they've been a bit off the radar even with their number five ranking I think the nation no matter how this game ends has a new appreciation for what Colt McCoy and the Longhorns can do I've been most impressed with the way they've been able to answer every time it looks like Oklahoma has an advantage it seems like Texas plays their best and comes right back.
Set that screen in the middle and nothing doing. Brandon Collins, the receiver, and it's blown up by Granger, the young man who's come back along with English. So there is number 96. It's good to see him back in the lineup. Boy, anytime you run that, that jailbreak screen, the flanker screen, and it's thrown behind the receiver, it slows him down just for a second. It gives the defensive line to chase that play down from the backside, and the play really has no chance. Third and eight. First down. Shipley's wide open. Touchdown, Texas. Hold on now. The field judge has come to the one yard line. He's standing there like they're going to. They're going to mark this inside the one yard line. This was third and eight. Take a look. Third and eight and it's again opening over the middle of the defense. They go after Crow. What a block that time by Quan Cosby. Boy Shipley let's look at this again. Great block by Cosby. I'm going to take a look at this. His knee is down, but I want to see where the football is when his knee touched. Well executed. They found the opening in the middle. And what I love is the effort by number six coming back into the play to take down Lindy Holmes. Look at right here, Cosby. Boom! Lights up Lindy Holmes. That's a rivalry game block right there. Oh, that's pretty. That is nice. He was down. Yep. That's a good call on Great the field. Call. He came in there in a hurry, didn't he? Well, at least this time they're taking a look at it. If I had any criticism of, of these fellows upstairs, they didn't take a look at a couple After of plays. Review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. And it's first down, Texas, short of a touchdown. Uh, that's a good call. Great call. And they looked at it, which is what we always, have you should always, always do. Those that. other two should have been looked at. Yeah. The play is significant because Oklahoma, the effort to bring down Shipley, but Brent, Texas doesn't really have a back necessarily in a running game when they get into these situations. Now we have seen Cody Johnson come in, and of course the big defensive tackle Roy Miller, and it looks like they've checked back into the game, and it helped him in the first half to score a touchdown. Johnson, Miller, Obenaya. Johnson right straight ahead for the touchdown. That's his second score of the day as Texas regains the lead. What a push up front by this offensive line. Look at the right side just cave in the Oklahoma defensive line. Just pushed him right back into the end zone making it very easy for Roy Miller to lead the way and for the big fella Cody Johnson to go in for a touchdown. Colt McCoy looking to the sideline because the horns obviously will go for two to see if they could put it on a three point difference here. Seven and a half minutes remaining. <laughs> Juggle Cosby's got it. Oh, baby. I think I've seen everything here today. I've seen oh, this is touchdowns that aren't, interceptions that aren't. I've seen juggles for touchdowns. I've seen juggles for two points. Oh, man. Oh, you're not going away, are you? You're coming right back, aren't you, folks? <laughs> There's more to come. Ah, here's a question, Kirk. Uh, were those pigs wearing lipstick? <laughs>
<laughs> Number two is out of the gate slow, but he finished strong there. Oh, my God. Can't beat fun at the old State Fair of Texas. If you paid a few hundred extra dollars for a ticket today, did you get your money's worth? Did this take your mind off the stock market for a couple hours? This has been something. The amazing thing to think about here is you got number one in the country against number five in the country. It's a rivalry game, conference championship on the line, trying to stay in a national. I mean, there's so much at stake, and then you got this kind of game. We're not even close to being over yet. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, we've got seven and a half minutes to go. Uh, we can have two or three more touchdowns before this one's over. Murray. The 20 yard line shakes free at the 30 and he has run out at the 38 yard line and uh, look at the ESP and you all state stands review Kirk just told you we've got number one and number five there Alabama of course idle Missouri as Oklahoma State Red Hot another big one to the Big 12 and of course LSU at four so a couple of the key games still to unfold today. Yeah, some huge games later tonight and as they always say the cream starting to rise in college football we're starting to really find out who these teams are as they define themselves in big games. Off a play fake. Bradford snaps it off for about a seven yard gain. Iglesias. We talked so much leading into the game about these quarterbacks and their numbers. Sam Bradford, just another day at the off. That's right. 25 of 31. That's Murray, and he's short. This is going to bring down third down and about two coming up. And it'd be a long two for OU. Lisa could tell you a lot better than, than you and I from up here. But the body language from here, huge advantage with Texas and the way they're moving around. You can feel that. He sense some confidence coming from the Longhorns right now. He's going to throw for it. Fourth down coming up. Fourth down with six and a half minutes to go. And uh, see an injured Sooner on the play down at the 40 yard line. Blake Gideon in coverage, the true freshman. Manny Johnson has a chance to make that catch. It would have been very close if he was able to secure the ball. But Gideon playing a heck of a game and it's Lamar Houston down for Texas. So that Bobino was in that time at middle linebacker. Remember that Jared Norton, the junior, started. And the senior Bobino was applying some pressure on that play. So here's your fourth down. You all know what happened the last two times he's handled it. One a fake. The other well, one might have been a second fake. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Trouble up the middle and he gets it off. Cosby fair catch signal at the 20 yard line. Six and a half minutes to go. What McCoy and the Horns would like to have is a ball control drive. Easier said than done. Football, right? The emotion that we see week in and week out, you can't beat it. Texas with a three point lead. Six and a half minutes to go. Coming out from their own 20 yard line. Obanaya picks his way for a couple of yards. And uh, this graphic certainly tells the story of what happened after that young man, Reynolds, was injured. Kirk. Ryan Reynolds goes down with an injury. And again, kind of the, the leader, the man who's in charge of making sure everybody's lined up. You can see the effect once Brandon Crow came in, who, again, just a young player trying to fill in for the leader. It's always tough for anybody. My opinion with Texas, with the lead, with six minutes to go, the worst thing they could do is get too conservative. 
ball possession is key, but at the same time, Brent, in this drive, they still have to attack. It's too early in this game to pull your horns in. Second and seven. Snaps one off to Cosby, and this will bring up about a third and three as Jackson makes the stop for the Sooners. Big one coming up. Three man rush. Drop it off, first down. Obanaya slips out of the backfield. Boy, another nice job here by Colt McCoy showing patience. The offensive line gives him time. Obanaya is going to slide out of the backfield. His fourth read, by the way, slips it off. And that's the difference this year with Colt McCoy. Major Applewhite, the former. Longhorn quarterback who was last year in Alabama as an offense coordinator has helped out. He's a running back coach, but he's really talked with Colt a lot about the importance of dumping it off to the backs. Signaling Cosby on the outside. Keeping it on by his hands. He's got an alley off to the races. He's got speed. Ten, five, dive, out. Marked out of bounds at the two yard line. Watch the center and the right guard lead the way and open this play up. Obanaya, watch these two blocks. Boom, they clear it. And I'll tell you what, Obanaya showing speed last week for this Texas offense. And again this week, Oklahoma fortunate that Keenan Clayton had an angle in the speed to push him out of bounds at the two yard line. Texas starting to take control in the trenches here in these last few possessions. Johnson will come in again. He's scored twice. He'll line up behind Miller. Obanaya, after the long run, stays out there as the wingback to help with the blocking. They're going to play fake. They're going to throw to Miller. Dropped it. The big fella. You know that they've worked on it. You know how much you <laughs> wanted him to throw him the football. He's begged. I'm sure in practice, coach, oh, just call day. it one time. He slips out. The timing on first and ten after a, a big play is perfect by Greg Davis. Doesn't wait till second or third down. Goes right back to it on first down. And the big man, Roy Miller, he knows it's there. He's got the touchdown. Just couldn't hold on to it. Now the big fellow will sit down as a blocker. Johnson to the end zone. Touchdown. Miller's days as a receiver may be numbered, but not as a blocker. He blew that hole wide open. So let's hear it for number 99. Makes up for it. Watch him. How'd you like to be Cody Johnson following that hole? Oh, yeah, baby. The big man getting a push. And again, this Texas offensive line, the confidence really coming on here, taking control of things against the Oklahoma Sooner front. So we have just seen our 13th score of this game. The Texas Longhorns, their last four possessions. Touchdown, field goal, touchdown, and touchdown again. Dropping a hammer down in Dallas. Four oh two remaining. This is the most impressive thing to me about what Texas has been able to do. Showing that backbone, being able to fight back, being on the ropes against an Oklahoma team that coming into today was the number one team in the country and they still could end the day at number one team in the country it depends on what happens here but Texas give them credit for fighting back when they've been trailing today Murray fine return to the 40 yard line I just got a Matt Weiner for Sports Center right now in New York Matt
here it's a 10 point Longhorn lead with 355 to go. Bradford sets the middle screen to start the series. Midfield 45 40 goes Ryan Broyles. He scored one touchdown on a ricochet already today for the Sooners. And don't count these Sooners out with Sam Bradford. Remember, they're in a comfort zone in the hurry up. They have a chance to get, and we've seen it all day today. They have a chance to get right down the field and score in a hurry. Still have two timeouts left to try to get the ball back to Bradford if they're able to put points on the board. Gresham lets you get away from him. McElroy running with him there. Able to get a hand in there. It looked like to be able to knock that football away. We've talked a lot about how Grisham is such a nightmare of a matchup because of his size and speed. But McElroy has held his own today. Gideon and Thomas are the two deep safeties. And that's Gideon. Now he drops back. Looking for receiver and down in the arms of Kendall. Sergio Kendall. A rack pull comes from one side and forces Bradford to step up at the top of the screen. 98 step makes him step up and look who he steps into. Sergio Kendall coming in. Those two make a dynamic duo as bookends for this Longhorn defensive front. OU calls a timeout. They face a third and 14, down 10, 3.12 to go. Third and 15 for Bradford and the Sooners. They must reach the just across the 32 yard line for their first down. Murray's the running back. Going to try to run for it and can't. Brings up fourth down. Kendall tripping him up. Sam Bradford bailing on that play early. Sensing pressure from the outside. They're going to go with the hurry up here. Nope. Here's your fourth down call now. Throws for it. Incomplete Texas football. Two and a half minutes to go. Leading by 10. The underdog horns have the ball back. Going to go back to the beginning of this broadcast. We talked about could Texas disrupt Sam Bradford enough today to give themselves a chance to win this game. Bradford, the last few series, uncomfortable, happened to move around quite a bit in the pocket, forces the throw here, steps up, he's out of rhythm. The ball could have still been caught, it would have been tough by Iglesias, but credit Texas up front for disrupting the rhythm for Sam Bradford here in these last few possessions. Now, offensive coordinator Greg Davis will attempt to eat up as many ticks of that clock as he can. He knows how dangerous the Sooners can be with the ball. Abaniah, who has been a factor, a huge factor here in the second half. And uh, you can't say enough, Kirk, you've talked about Will Muschamp, but some of the other guys over there, Dwayne Aquina, and uh, also upstairs, Oscar Giles with the defensive ends. The entire defensive coaching staff against uh, Bob Stoops in Oklahoma have done a magnificent job for the Longhorns here today. Uh, they got into a big shootout. Obviously the offensive coach you talked about Major Applewhite and now Greg Davis has called a spectacular game. I don't I don't think enough can be said about what Texas was able to do today Brent because for the whole you know, first half of this season even though they moved up in the rankings nobody really knew how good Texas was until today. Today was their chance to showcase their ability and their coaching staff with Colt McCoy as their leader on a big stage against the number one team in the country and they answered the challenge and I think demonstrated out the thing that I love about this Texas team is you can sense the chemistry and the leadership 
is outstanding. And sometimes that's the magic ingredient to get to a championship season. Second down and 11. Open eye again. We're home out of timeout, so they should Can't get the, stop it. If they stop, a, they're going to get the ball back with 10 points. It's not enough time, even for Sam Bradford. Mack has had his troubles through the years with Stoops. There's no question about that. And everybody, every place you went and every radio talk show you're on, you said you were asked, does Stoops have Mac Brown's number? I mean, they asked me that on SportsCenter yesterday. And uh, well, I would say he didn't have his number today. I'm so glad you brought that up. Because early in this rivalry, Bob Stoops got a lot of credit for dominating Texas and Mac Brown. And it became a mindset game. Vince Young had the breakthrough moment a few years ago, but now think about this. Vince Young's not here anymore. Texas has won three of the last four against OU. If you're a senior on this year's team, you've beaten OU three of the last four years. So it's not just Vince Young. This is about Mac Brown in Texas. Well, you know, we've talked about these two quarterbacks, and I don't think Sam Bradford's eliminated should Oklahoma lose it, talking about the Heisman now. But, of course, next week, Chase Daniel. If Missouri handles Oklahoma State tonight, there's a big one set up in Austin with the Texas Longhorns. And uh, who knows where the rankings are going to shake out. There's still a lot of action. A couple of huge games sure. left to unfold. It's not impossible, folks. I, I'm not going to hype this anymore, it is, but it's not impossible. It'll be one versus two, depending on what happens. Remember now, Oklahoma is the third number one team we've had this year, right? Georgia, USC, and Oklahoma. They could be the third number one to lose, okay? So that opens up the number one spot. And you've got Alabama's idol, so you don't know how the voters will handle them. You've got LSU with that big one. You've got Missouri, and you've got Texas. You're going to have to shake all this out. First things first, of course, Obaniah. Keeps the clock moving. Remember now, Kirk told you Oklahoma without a timeout. You got to believe if LSU is able to go to Gainesville and win, mm -hmm. most people are going to put them at number one. If they're to lose that football game, then it comes down to what Texas has done tonight. If Missouri is able to beat Oklahoma State, and as you said, an Alabama team that's idle, and the last time they played, they weren't that impressive against Kentucky. So there are a lot of factors that go into play here. And let's not forget that old fella, Joe Pye. Hey! I, you, we showed that graphic, Penn State's. All right, there they're working. The outside, they are. We'll see them maybe in a couple of weeks. Oh, yeah. For, they got a one at, big one in Columbus, yes. don't they, with, uh, yep. with Ohio State coming by. I, I, I just hope that uh, all of you out there watching and listen, I hope you've enjoyed this one as much as we have uh, being here. This, this, this has really been a lot of fun. And uh, it's just a great, great shootout. Uh, Texas did a great job, Kirk, in coming back. Great coaching job over there. I know you and I both like to give our condolences to Ryan Reynolds, who has right. had two knee surgeries in the last couple years. Finally healthy, back, had a chance in the offseason to instead of rehabbing his knees, had a chance to get faster, to get stronger. Was having a great year, and then today he's got a knee brace on that right leg, and uh, they'll, the OU Sooners will, will, will they missed him today, but they'll miss him down the stretch. You know I go back to one other thing Kirk. Uh, fourth down here. Horns are going to punt of course if OU could bust one. They still have a chance for an onside kick here. And it is picked up by Broyles on a hop and he's out of bounds. Out of bounds at but the 18 yard line and coming up at 330 Eastern now. ESPN College Football on ABC, Arizona State. They, of course, take on USC. Purdue, we mentioned Ohio State. They'll be in Columbus today. Notre Dame, North Carolina. Those are those are your games at uh, at 3:30. I guess we're just we're just about past that, aren't we? Right now, uh, I'll give, back. I I'll give you a prediction: time. two blowouts, and North Carolina, Notre Dame becomes a national game maybe this afternoon. It could be a biggie now for both those. Yeah. I, Kirk, I was into. Here comes Bradford. Now let's stick with the young man here, rolling hard to the left, slashing on the short hop on that. Uh, on that throw downfield. I couldn't believe I read and I think it was Associated Press this week said that for the first time in the history of Notre Dame they're four and one and unranked. 
Can that be? I guess so. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I, I I didn't realize in the history of Notre Dame, but it is interesting. You got to think if they if they go to Chapel Hill and win, they move to five and one. Obviously, they'll be up in the top 25 next week. That would probably be if they're able to win. That would be their biggest win that they've had so far this year. Snaps it off into space. A prevent defense, though, and they let him get close to midfield with. And of course, stops the clock at a first down in the uh, in the college game. The other thing I want to say about Colt McCoy, Kirk, you were making your move, and I, I, I hope you all had a chance to hear the tribute that he made to a cousin who was killed in Iraq. And you know, he dedicated this season to that young man um, yeah. who gave his life. And it's just uh, it, was a, it was a wonderful, wonderful story about the show. Man. Everybody has a story, you know, out there. But Colt McCoy is one of the good guys. He one really of the good is. guys. You sit down with Colt McCoy, and I have four young boys. You just hope that your boys will grow up like Colt McCoy. What a class act. Fumble. The Oklahoma's got the uh, got the loose ball right about the. Uh, and should also touch on one last thing here. Will Muschamp. So much made out of his defense. They brought him in from Auburn for these types of games. How would he do? He's had two freshman safeties that played the entire game. Three new starters in the secondary. Could they answer the call against this Oklahoma offense and Sam Bradford? And I know they gave up 35 points, but you know what? They played aggressively. They played with a lot of spirit. Nice job by Will Muschamp. They were tough down the stretch. Tough when they had to be. They got the prevent back there in the end zone. Out of bounds. And the Red River rivalry comes up Texas and Colt McCoy. 45 35. There's the two great quarterbacks. And Lisa's right there. Colts got a few words with Sam Bradford. Let's go to Lisa. Thanks, Brett. Colt, you just had a moment there with Sam Bradford. What was he saying to you? Sam and I are great friends. He played in a great game. You know, he led his team as best he could, uh, and we came out on top. I thank God for giving me this opportunity. Uh, what, a, what an awesome opportunity. To play these two teams are great. You know, it seems like every time you guys went down, you had an answer for them. What were you saying to your guys over there in that whole second half? Just keep your head up. You know, believe one play at a time. You play one play at a time. I promise you, we'll do good things. And and we did. We executed. We had a hard time running the ball early. Uh, we we passed the ball really well tonight. And we came out on top. And Thanks a lot, Cole. Congratulations. Thanks. Thank you. All right, Lisa, and our Chevrolet players of this game are these two fine quarterbacks. And in recognition of their effort, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. A 10 point Texas win. And coming up next, regional coverage of ESPN College Football on ABC Arizona State at USC, Purdue at Ohio State, Notre Dame at North Carolina. So big games still to come here today. And in Dallas, the Longhorns are celebrating. For Lisa Salters and Kirk Herbstreit, I'm Brent Musburger. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on ABC. Jim Trussell 